I think hospitality and retail, everyone should start. Right. When you're young, everyone should That's start. That's interesting because I, I would never recommend retail to... Really? Yeah. I, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like at least in my journey, I went through finance. So I went to a bank initially. Mm. And my thought process behind that's like, in retail, you can only get up so high before you're capped. Like, all right, you're managing the store and then what? But it's not, a, it's not about the career. It's the, the skills that you learn. So for True. example, if you're in finance, you're only sort of talking to a certain level of people. Mm. Whereas in retail, you've got the finance guy coming in to get a t-shirt. You've got the, you got the real estate guy. You've got the, the mom, the dad. Like you've mm. got all different characters. Mm. You don't learn, like if you learn how to speak to all different characters, you can learn how to market to all different characters. Sure. So then you take that skill set. I'm not, I never wanted to become a retail. I hated retail. Mm. The, the only way I, turn, I actually started liking retail is when I started giving advice to people. When I'm like, oh, fuck, I actually, I can sit here and talk to, this, not shut the fuck up for five hours and talk to someone about their life. And it makes it rewarding for you as well, right? Because you're passionate about actually adding value. And that's what it was. It mm. was, you know, people think that I'm passionate about selling sex toys. It's not the sex toys. I'm passionate about talking about a taboo subject that not many people can go to other people about. You don't go to your mum and dad about, this is what's happening in my body or this is what's happening when I have sex. Mm. Your friends are not as educated as what you are. Mm. you got to go to some random. Why not the fucking guy who's loud, a little bit abrupt and, you know, just looks like talks like me and you, mm. you know, and that's, that's yeah. what I did. You're definitely very approachable. Thank you. I'll your staff you says the same about you. <laughs> you fuck you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I want to do, man. We should get like we should get some of them in here. I want to like live interviews. <laughs> no, that'd be, that'd be bad, bro. We did a survey once about like two, three years ago. Um, it wasn't even my idea, but we did a survey for all the overseas staff. Like one of my my two IC essentially was like, let's do a survey because he could tell everyone was sort of a bit pissed pissed off at me. Do a survey for all the staff on <laughs> about Bashara. Like as one of the aspects, it was like a bit about the boss. And they destroyed me, bro. But can I just say something? Like, you know what I respect? Most people would like cut this shit out. And like, nah, you're actually honest about it. Yeah. Right? We all have fuck ups. I've had Correct. staff that fucking didn't like me. Mm. It's their fault. Mm. But sometimes when you're like, you know, I feel like when you're running a business and then when you have staff and like you have one objective and mm. then their objective, a lot of if they're not on the right, uh, in your business for the right reason. Mm, on the same wavelength. Yeah, or, or on the same mission. Mm. Their objective is just to rock up and get paid. Right. So anything like, you're, you're happy to go spend an extra five hours working on something that you're not going to see a, a, a reward for. Mm. A lot of people might have to look to that. Yeah. And I changed I change that fucking attitude with my staff. I was going for a staff and I'm like, fucking, if you're not going to work, fuck off. Mm. But then I'm like, how can I change? Because as you grow as a man, you get fucking objectives. You get like insights. I changed. I was like, okay, no, no. How can I add value to their lives? Bro, the minute I did that, my whole staffing situation changed for the better. You know but what? Same thing here as well, bro. Like I, I used to be like militant, like mm. a commander, like every single time. I can tell that you should quiet. What's going on? The general scenario. came out and like the backs all went straight and everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, no, this isn't the whole team either like a lot of them work from home because they don't even want I thought you were better to say a lot of them like, why? <laughs> no the coaching is a lot better but yeah. before it was rough and then like you said you attract more bees with honey right like if you if you approach it how are you making the, what are their objectives and how can you help with their objectives how did you have that mindset shift for I think I think it happens slowly over time. You build up character. You realize it's not all about yourself, and you know you've actually got to you got to operate as a team and the human beings. Like the comments they were leaving is like, we're not super slaves. You can't just be like, do this, do this, do this. So you got to approach it in a more empathetic way. And yeah. I think that happens only with experience. You know, you have one person quit over X, Y, Z, and you sort of wake up to yourself a little, a little bit. And people, if when you start hearing the same message over and over again, yeah, for sure, you know, you know, you're the one in the wrong. But it's like relation. It's like relationships as well. Mm. It's exactly. Oh, he's fucking. You know, he's possessive. Okay. Oh, he's possessive. Not me. I'm fucking not like that. You wear whatever mm. you want, baby. But like, like you. You're exactly right. Once you start hearing the same fucking issues, and you're like, and you know what, AJ, bro, I hear the same issues with all the girls that I end up dating, bro. Really? Yeah. What is it? Tell me. This is fascinating. <laughs> there is a part I came for. <laughs> Why? Let's talk about it. One of one of the biggest reoccurring things. Firstly, is you're too in love with your business. That's the first one. You're in love with your business and not me. That's one. That's a reoccurring message. But to that one, like you, know, you read books here. It is. Yeah. Heaps. Have you read The Way of the Superior Man? No. Oh, you got to get it. Okay. Actually, I'm gonna get it for you. I'm gonna send it via Amazon. 
Love that. I'll with the butt plug. I'm going to send to what, bro? What the fuck is wrong with you? You didn't mind out of the gutter. Sorry, man. That's very disgusting. Very That's disgusting. <laughs> What's wrong with you? But in the book, like, because I always, you know, get into a little bit of strife on my content because I say that as well. I mm-hmm. say, I feel like, don't get me wrong, you should have a partner there and you give her the world and support her, love her and everything. But like, at the end of the day, a man's got to be on his purpose. Mm. And in the book, it, it, it t- gives an example of, uh, you know, in 1943, when like the, all those photos came out of like the nurse kissing the soldier right on the battleship oh, yeah. right before he's going to war, yeah, yeah, like yeah. they're leaning out, blah, blah. And this guy gives the example that, you know, if you were, uh, he's going to war, he's yep. on his mission, he's on his purpose. Mm. And although he lets her down, naturally she kind of like, she's proud of him, you know? But if he were to turn around and he's like, no, no, fuck this, I'm not going to this war, I'm not going on my purpose. I'm I'm coming back to I'm gonna go back to her. I'm getting off this boat. I'm not going to war. Yeah, she'll like it for a second, but she's gonna naturally start to resent him mm-hmm. and lose respect. You know, in the process right? A hundred percent. Don't get me wrong. That being said, like you should make time for your partner. Mm. And like with your business, you probably like think you're hanging out with him. She's just sitting there. You're sitting there. You're there for an hour and a half. And blah, I'm making time for you. Mm. It's not. You got pull like you actually. If you actually pull like. Even if you were to put 45 minutes or an hour a day where you're like, phone's off. Like, Joanna, redirect my calls. Like, you know, don't, this is my time. And you give her that one hour of pure dedication. Yeah. You're not going to hear the you put my business thing. Mm. Hey guys, if you enjoyed that short clip from the podcast, feel free to watch more of them by clicking here. And if you want the full podcast, click here.